YouTube. I love this, this is really great. I'm literally here with my iced coffee and my Bible. Um, and a lot of the time when you're asked that sort of icebreaker, what would you take to a desert island if you could only take two items? I honestly think these are my two items. Iced coffee and a Bible, dehydration, nourishment. I'm sure, I'm sure there has to be some sort of nourishment in here. Calcium, you know, if you have milk or uh, for those people who are vegan, I'm sure oat milk has some something great in it. Wherever you are today, I hope you're very comfortable and having a great Monday. We're sort of here to get a bit into what God sort of put in my heart that I want to share with you guys today. And that is rest. Rest is a word that I'm sure you've been hearing going around a lot, especially sort of in the Christian sphere. Rest is a very important thing, but in a time where maybe rest feels like a very unnatural thing to do, but something that actually, the more we do, the more we're actually being instructed to rest because we've been told to stay at home and we're in a lockdown. But sometimes when you're told to do something, I'm not sure if you're anything like me, it's harder to do because you've been told to do it rather than it feels more like a choice. But I really believe that in everything God is doing right now, there is a plan and a purpose because we serve a God who this didn't throw him off. It, it's, it wasn't something that he thought, whoa, where did this come from? I did not see this coming. He had a plan and the plan that he has is good and it's gonna be good for us and his children that he loves. So in these times, it's really searching what is it that God is wanting out of this season for me? And ultimately, I think there's a very, there's always one clear answer I always go to and that's my heart. He wants to get to know my heart more. But how does resting sort of allow us to do that? So like I said, a really important thing, the Bible has all these answers. This book may have been written so long ago, but it even has answers for what's happening right now in this world and how we are as a nation, as a community, as you going to respond to it. So I think it's about time to get into that. I think it's quite funny because the world is something that promotes us to keep on going. It promotes hard work. It absolutely praises those who, you know, get up at five o'clock and go to the gym and bake in the morning and then go to school and then come back and then write a book and write and all these great things which are fantastic. But that's the world we live in. It's always pushing a very fast pace. Look at the production of fast fashion, for example. Everything is pushed at a fast, accelerating pace. And I think for the first time in a long time, the world's had to stop and we can't, we can't work. We are no longer, be, we've been told not to work at that pace, to slow down and everything's had to draw back. So I think this is something that is very unnatural for the whole world. And the whole world right now is figuring out how to make sense of it. And I'm not sure how you guys are responding. I'm sure there's some of you who've managed to find a routine in this and managed to still find some way to be productive. And then there's also some of us who may not be. I mean, I know sometimes for myself, I find it really hard to find a routine in this sort of space and time. And I think both are completely fine, but obviously sometimes you'll find that social media will really promote you to still keep going and still keep pushing. But if that's natural for you, absolutely fine. If not, then I guess there's answers in the Bible for both of the sort of responses in these times. The Bible does talk about rest. It talks about it in a very different way to the world does. So the first thing, I want to go to is Genesis 2 verse 3. Quite short, so a bit of context, just basically talking about God creating the world and that must have been a lot of hard work. By the seventh day, God had finished his work and so he rested. God blessed the seventh day and made it special because on that day he rested from his work. Now I just think for me that says a couple things. The first thing, God, the person who has an infinite capacity to work and an infinite has no limit as humans we have a point where we tire we need sleep god rested he must be calling us to rest but one thing that i also the second thing that we i take from this on the seventh day god had finished his work so god rested after he finished his work so it wasn't midway he thought oh i'm gonna rest i'm gonna take a break now or rest now he actually rested after finishing his work sort of in the passage he rested when it was good he said and it was good so god didn't stop when when it was mediocre he stopped when it was good and then he rested and that's what made it so special it depends what version you're reading from but it literally said you know, he made the Sabbath a, day, a holy day. And I think that is something, rest is holy. So it's something that's really special actually. But from this, we can see how God is modeling rest. He's modeling it rest by saying, rest when you're finished and rest when it's complete and as good as you know it may be. So that might be with homework. Rest when you know you've done, um, because I guess that's the differentiation between rest and laziness, um, which I'll go into a bit now. 
because what does the Bible say about working, about, so it's also great to think about rest, but I think to understand rest, we have to also understand what does God say about hard work. So I want to go to Proverbs 6. So a bit of context again, God is actually talking about, he's talking about ants really, and um, how ants work. So again, God created ants and their, their sort of rhythms and natures, but he sort of says, it says, you lazy people can learn by watching an ant hill. Ants don't have leaders, but they store up food during harvest season. How long will you lie there doing nothing at all? When, you're, when are you going to get up and stop sleeping? So I think that's very clear. And like ants, they, they sort of build up harvest. Ants sort of store up their food for, for the hard times. And a bit like what I was saying, if you were there at you, about camels with waters in their back, they store water in their back. And as Christians, we have to store up. We have to continue sort of feeding on the word and grazing on the word and continue to sort of feed our spirits for these times where, uh, you know, it, difficulty may be and there's lots of uncertainty and all this sort of thing. Um, verse nine, when he says, when are you going to get up and stop sleeping? And I think that just says God is a God who wants us to continue to work hard. The same God who talks about rest is the same God who talks about working hard. Working hard is something that is a theme that you can find within the Bible. But one thing you'll find that it says that the world doesn't say is you work hard for the glory of God. Um, not to your boss, not to your um, teachers, not to your head teacher, um, not even for your friends so you can sort of compete and get a better grade but it's ultimately working hard for God. Education is such a blessing I think so uh, you, you never know what God is calling you to do in this time and I just sort of thought I'd almost finish on this point of from rest. When we rest we are better more effective so from resting you have no idea what god is going to do in the season when you're resting you as a youth community may start to write albums and books that will change the world um, but ultimately it comes from a place of rest we can't sort of outpour into the world and the world desperately needs us and the light that christians hold but we can't do that unless we're a place of rest but when we are full and our cup is full and it's ready to overflow it usually means it's time to get to work so I think be inspired by both of these messages and I think you can't understand one without the other all the seeds that are implanted inside of us from birth that God has always known are there they do need water and water usually means a storm so sometimes God may send, send storms but I think those storms water those flowers to grow so you never know what your response might be in this time it might be for some reason all i want to do is sing all i want to do is get my drums out and play them all i want to do is maybe even learn a new skill that's just what i feel very called to so again listening to what what is god calling to you to do in rest uh, but again have an amazing monday and i'm gonna yeah finish off my iced coffee and enjoy my day <laughs> bye